Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be taking a look at this liquid paint effect. Now this is a look that's very much on trend for 2020. Loads of people are doing various kinds of liquid looks and this is quite an interesting one. So anyway, let's get started. Let's first of all take a quick look at our project setup here. 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second. I've got a duration of 15 seconds. I'm going to first of all just make a background. So I'm going to come to my generators, add a color solid, and let's make it switch to grayscale here. Let's make that 70% gray. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new group, object new group, and we're going to add a generator's clouds. So first of all, let's set the horizontal and vertical scale to 64. Let's reduce the speed down to 0.2. Then I'm also going to come down here to the strength sliders and I'm going to set them all down to zero apart from layer four. So that fourth layer strength is going to be one. Okay, so I'm going to then open up the gradient editor and I want to make some extra color tabs here. So I'm going to make another two just by clicking on this bottom bar here. So let's just set up these colors and I'm going to, I've already picked these. So I'm just, just clicking on these and selecting them from my color swatches here. Now what we want to do with these colors, we don't want them to smear into each other, we want them to abruptly change from one to the other. So in order to do that, we're going to select each one, so this one on the left here, and we're going to switch the interpolation to constant. Uh, same with the next one, and same with this next one. Don't need to worry about the last one. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring that last one in till we start seeing a little bit of that black color like that. And then let's just bring that one in so we start seeing that. Just want to see a bit, a little bit of each of these colors. Something like this is going to be probably quite good. A little bit more of that would be nice. Okay, so there you go. So now we've got our base color texture and animated it looks like that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create a, a mask for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new group and we're going to add a whole new Clouds generator. So this one, I want to reduce the horizontal and vertical scale to 24. I'm just going to reduce that speed down to 0.4. Again, we're going to do that same thing with these layer strengths. So everything down to zero apart from layer four. Open up the gradient. And here, very simply, we're going to select the black one there. And we're going to set that one to constant. And then we're going to take the white one here and set its location to 50. And again, you can see we've got no transition between the two colors, and that's going to give us our matte. So I'm going to take that clouds layer and I'm going to add an image mask to it. And I'm going to select this group here. I'm going to call that group matte, actually. Let's try that. Okay, and I'm going to come back down to the image mask and I'm going to set that source channel to luminance. And now you can see we've got those colors matted against our background. So at some point we want our paint to disappear and we want to be left with just our text. So let's set that up now. I'm going to come to 12 seconds on the timeline. Uh, let's select our clouds generator here. Let's select that white color tab there. And I'm going to click on the location keyframe button there. Step forward to 14 seconds. And then I'm just going to increase that value to 85. And you'll see that that's basically shrunk the mat, making those paint blobs disappear. Then we also obviously want to add in our text so that in this mat group above that clouds, I'm going to select my text tool. I'm going to type the word liquid. Let's set this size to 450. Let's set the baseline to negative 150 to center it up. Let's center align it. And then let's just reset its transform. Okay, so the text needs to 
appear. But if we were, for example, just to animate its opacity, it doesn't look like it's being formed out of paint. It just looks like it's fading up and that, that looks no good at all. So what we're going to have to do is to create a mat for it. So again, I'm going to, in this group, I'm going to add another clouds generator. So select the clouds. And what we're going to do here is the same thing that we've did, done before. I'm just going to adjust these a little bit differently so that I'm left with layer three of 0.5. I don't want it to be exactly the same as my main reveal. And let's open up the gradient editor. Let's do the same thing with the black there. Set its interpolation to constant. Let's have a look at this layer so we can see what's happening here. We'll need to animate the white value here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to 12 seconds, set a location keyframe and set that value to 85. Then let's step forward to 13 and a half seconds, so 13, 12. And let's set that value down to 25. And that's created a fully white frame. So all black and then it animates on like that. So now we can use this as a, as a mask to reveal our text. So let's select our text layer and let's add image mask, set the source channel to luminance, and we'll use that clouds too as the source. So let's call that clouds text. And you'll see that the text is now animating on and that's looking pretty nice. So let's turn off this clouds layer because we don't need to see it. And then we can see the color result and it looks like that. So one other thing I want to do here is I want the text to materialize out of a much larger blob. So I don't initially want to see that we've got letters. I just want to see a blob of paint and then that expands out to become the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that text layer, come to filters, stylize, and I'm going to select min max. So I'm going to come to 12 and a half seconds, so 12, 12. I'm going to switch the mode of the min max to maximum. I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm going to set that radius value to 50. And then I'm going to step forward to 13 and a half, so 13, 12 and set that radius down to zero. And now you'll see that it's a little bit more interesting. It's, it's, it's sort of expanding out from a blob rather than appearing as text. And I think, I think that's gonna look better. So now we're ready to make this look a little bit more like paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my matte group and I'm going to make a clone of it. And I'm going to call this indent source, because we're going to use this with an indent filter. And I'm going to select the clone layer inside there, come to filters, blur, select Gaussian blur, set the amount to 128. And just remember to enable crop because that'll get rid of this edge that we see on the outside there. So now we've got a soft version of our overall mat that looks like that. We don't need to see this, so I'm going to turn that group off. Then I want to come down to the clouds group here, the, the group with the colored clouds in it. Let's call this master or something just so we can identify it more easily. So that's the one with this colored clouds generator in it. And I'm going to add uh, three filters to that. So first of all, I'm going to use stylize indent. Then I'm going to use stylize extrude. And then I'm going to use color levels. So I'm just going to turn the extrude off while we set up the indent filter. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add to that height map source well there, this indent source group that we've made. So drag that in there. And immediately it's given us the basis of our look, this nice soft painted look. And that's because we added that Gaussian blur to that clone there. So let's set this up. So let's go for about 0.65 on the softness. Let's increase that highlight brightness a bit like that. Light rotation we want to set to zero. And let's set the depth to, I think, five. I quite like the look of that. Now I'm going to turn on the extrude filter. Let's set the angle to 270. So the distance I'm going to set to 20. And the front brightness I'm going to set to one. 
and the back brightness down to 0.2. And the overall effect of that is that we've now got this shadow effect on the lower edges of our paint, and that really helps to kick out that 3D feel that the indent filter on its own was not giving us. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to use that levels control just to crunch it down a bit, just to get a little bit more, a little bit more out of this. So bring in the blacks, bring in the whites, and it's looking like this. And then the final resolve is going to look like that. Now you probably want to come and come in and adjust some of those keyframes to get a, a smoother result. I went into the keyframe editor and added some Bezier curves to those just to just to smooth it out. But for the point of this demonstration, I think that's that's pretty good. Now there's one other thing I want to show you. I'm going to close up some of these groups. I'm going to take that master group and I'm going to make a clone of it. So right click, make clone layer. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to add some little kicks to the animation. So I'm going to open up the timing here, and I'm just going to set the time ray map to variable speed. And let's open up the keyframe editor there. So here at three seconds, I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm going to step forward six frames, set another keyframe, and I'm just going to move that point up just a little bit. And now if we, sorry, I need to turn off the master group because we're actually looking at the clone there. We don't want to see both of them. There you go. So now you can see that we've done that little retime there. So we've got that nice little kick just on three seconds there. We could do another one at five seconds. So again, set a keyframe, Let's step forward six frames, set another keyframe. And let's just move that, Oop, deselect the other one. We don't, don't want them both selected, so just select that one, move it up just a little bit like that. And again, we've got that nice little kick there. And that's the great power of clones. We've cloned this entire group here with everything going on inside it. And we can just use that clone to do these little subtle retimings that give this really nice effect. So anyway, I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and I hope to see you again another time. Mm -hmm.